today. All the line gets put into this barrel. And it's, it's getting fed out of the barrel. And all these loops are stacked in order. So they'll pull a loop off the top, clip a pot on it, and throw it. There's 75 foot of line in between each pot. So you can get into a rhythm where you just know the timing. Throw them with the irons down so when they a piece of rebar on the bottom of the pot so the pot goes down straight. All four, all four funnels will be on the bottom. You want to let them out with a certain amount of slack. You don't want them too, too tight. You don't want them with a whole lot of slack because either way the tide or waves or the wind will tend to roll them over. If you have too much slack, you'll get big twisty knots in the line in between pots. It'll drag the pots around and if you get them too tight, pots get tipped over by the by the tide and everything. And you want a little bit of slack that if you're working really close to people and you accidentally lay lines over top of each other, the other guy can pull a loop in it and flip his barrel over on the other side. Other side of the line. We set back at about five knots. You have a little more line in between each pot. You can sit back a little faster, but usually about five knots is about the pace we like to keep. So part of the stacker's job is to unstack the pots and get them to the shaker. The shaker typically sets There's a hawk, a big buoy called a hawk on each end with a flag. second to last pot just so everybody on board knows we're coming up on the end and for the last one we'll say last pot, last pot. that's the last one before the hawk gets thrown the hawks have flags on them they have a blue flag for the north end and a white flag for the south end so i can tell which way the row runs I use GPS to help me find my stuff. I have a tracker on, so it tracks where I go, and I just know the certain lines are where I sit. And then I'll double back over them, and I know I've already fished it. And then I'll change the color of the line for different days, so I know how many days the pots have sat. I can keep track of how long the pots have been sitting. I'll use a different color tracker line on my GPS. And then I'll use little flag markers to uh, mark ends of rows sometimes. I fish what's called underwater lines, which means I have, we call them rows, which is a group of crab pots on a single string. I have 25 pots per row. They each have a hawk, a buoy with a flag called a hawk on either end. And every 75 foot there's a loop where the pots clip onto. Basically I just drive the boat, run the winder here, the hydraulic winder. It pulls the rope, pulls the rope in, it gets put into this barrel off the winder. I take the loop and I stack it on this piece of PVC pipe so they're all in order. So when we go to set them back, all the pots get put back like in order. So I unclip the pots off the line and then 
And then Josh, who's the shaker, would shake the crabs out, but I have not managed to catch any crabs this row so far. Puts bait in them and drops them in this tank to get clean. I use hot water to clean my pot. And then the stacker, shake him. You'll pick the pot up out of the out of the tank and stack it. Once we get all 25 pots on the boat, we'll turn around and set them back. This is only my second real day all the year. So the crab has been really, really poor. It's still pretty cold and it's been blowing a nor'easter for since I set them. So crabs really aren't trapping up. Here's a crab. This is the first crab of this row, which is pretty terrible. But that's a really pretty crab right there. It's a really nice crab. At the end of this month, once this water gets warmer, these crabs are gonna go turn into peelers. So we'll go into the creeks and rivers, and we'll turn into peelers, and then they'll slump into salt crabs. And then this crab will get a little bit bigger. Here's a couple of nice crabs. A couple of crabs in the pot there. They're just few and far between. I have a lot of gear in pretty shallow water because my boat is smaller than a lot of the other ones in the fleet, so I can crab in a lot shallower water. It's sort of a benefit to having a smaller boat. So once the water gets warm, we call it run and shoal. These crabs will run shoal. They'll, they'll go from deeper water to shallower water. Because they're getting ready. They need a little warmer water. They're getting ready to slump out. So they'll start eating. They're coming out of hibernation right now. couple. See a crab in the bottom? That's an indicator that the crabs are still trapping. Because the crab won't stay in the bottom of a pot very long. So the fact that there's a crab in the bottom of that pot tells me that there might be a couple moving around right now. They're starting to eat a little bit. There's not really enough numbers of them really get any good reading. Every crab is sort of a fluke right now. So it's hard to tell, but I mean, you can see uh, the pots are just empty. I mean, it's, it's been a tough spring. Spring crab is hard as it is. And it's been so windy and cold this spring that, I mean, I, nobody up here has really had any good picks. Any real good days. I'm thinking that once it warms up, it's really going to turn on here, not all at once. Usually in the beginning, a lot of guys will catch, have a few good days. We catch a lot of the bigger crabs that were hibernating over the winter, buried up in the mud, hibernating. So once it gets warm, initially it'll come out, they'll catch them up. I really haven't seen that at all even yet, so it makes me think that they're all still sort of sitting tight. Basically, I'm just, we're supposed to get some warmer weather next week. I'm basically just trying to get some fresh bait in them, get them set right, and have them ready for the beginning of next week when it, once it warms up. Or well and it will warm up and this wind will lay down and since the crabs haven't been able to move or trap or eat the past two weeks because of bad weather. 
They're gonna really be on it. They're gonna really be hungry. They're ready to scratch. There's a sunfish in that pot. A lot of times, sunfish are an indicator of water temperature. A lot of times, like in the fall, I know it's time to start packing it up. When I start seeing sunfish in pots, that means the water's getting pretty cold. The crabs are getting ready to shut off. Sunfish live in the creeks and rivers all year, all summer. And then once winter, winter hits, they move out to the bay to try to find a little bit of that deeper water. It's not as cold. The fact that I'm still seeing them out here in spring is telling me that the water is still pretty chilly out here. We need the water to come up another few degrees before everything really starts moving. We're kind of working on the opposite information kind of mindset that you were in the fall. The things that you start to see appear in the fall that indicate it's time to go home, you'll see in the spring when you're looking for those things to go away. I mean, as you can see right now, crabbing really is not real good at all. It's not, I wouldn't even consider it really crabbing. That or it's crabbing, not catching right now. But that's just part of how it goes. Do all that work, put them overboard, and then spend nine hundred dollars a day to go check them and put bait in them. Even if, even with a good market price, I'm not catching near enough crabs to even come close to cover cloth. But in the spring, a lot of times you got to get it out here and get get a little bit of a claim set. All the bottom is first come first serve despite what some people might think. So, if you get there first, you have every right to lay it up. But it gets tight, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of guys out here trying to make a living, so. There's spots you want, particular spots, sometimes you gotta get on them a little earlier. Kind of just got to take the loss, hoping that it'll pay off in the longer run. Thank you. 